Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi, and as always, I have the ladies with me, but I have a guest co-host today in the building. Lady Gwen in the building. How are you doing, Gwendolyn? I, I thought. I yes. thought we were going to have a red carpet for me. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and, you know, with, with all this shakari. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wait, was around. So Waike is, is in the UK. She traveled. Fantastic. Nima is indisposed. BC oh, had to take off today. Tokwe is in school. Oh. Like, so we just had to just invite you over to join the ladies. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing so you well. Too. So you're an author. She's a media practitioner. She's so many things. Tell us about yourself for those who don't know who you are. Yes, I know. Okay, so I, like you said, I'm a media practitioner, uh, a consultant. I just published a book. Yeah, called, <laughs> congratulations. Called Naked and Squid. Yeah. Um, it's on mental health, yeah. you know, shared some of my stories right. with depression, anxiety, yeah. right. and all of that. So, um, apart from that, I do so many things. You know, when you say hustler <laughs> yes. in the media, I'm one Most of the kind. you're a Nigerian, you're yeah, a hustler. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I do graphics, yeah. I do uh, communication, right. skill training, public speaking, right. um, events, management. Oh, oh, right. Amazing. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> thank you. Thank Mariam you. Longe, how you yeah. doing? I'm fine, Good thank you. you. I'm fine. For my own weekend, I have plans for my week. Ah, oh, nice. Guess what I have planned. Sliding. I'm sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> How did I I know? just want to sleep. I just catch up on all the movies I haven't caught up on on oh Netflix. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that's just all I need. And I, I, I need to I might, queen make. Yeah. No, I have one. You should. It's a I nice binge-worthy okay. type of thing. So I found myself, right, that I'll get on Netflix and I've watched nearly everything. I was like, no, there's a problem here. So I went <laughs> off Netflix for a while. So now I have a few movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I must say, I, I also had um, a detox for yeah. like two months, okay. yeah. you know, because nobody is paying me for my data. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. And then you're watching and some of the movies, you know, are on, yeah. on kind of repetition. So... It was I mean, just... I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad. But How I can have you? a few recommendations for you to on. Yeah, uh, please. <laughs> this weekend, recommendations on. today I'm supposed to be uh, moderating an event at Marriott. It's, a, uh, it's an agricultural um, conference. I'm not sure how that con is part of me, but I would love to. I'd like Wait, to learn. Moderating. I mean, yeah, I'm moderating, and I would love to actually learn what's going on in the agricultural sector, entrepreneurs in that mm. sector. I would love to meet them today. So I'm, I'll be there, so I have to put a touch of green, you know? Oh, what I'm wearing. oh. <laughs> and you're wearing, you're wearing yeah. one of your You have like colors. leaves uh, and everything. Yeah, I want it to be agriculturally inclined. <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow, I'm, I'm tomorrow to, I mean, just it's going to be a busy weekend. Mm -hmm. I've officially launched my book on social media now. Yes. So I'm going to start bringing out videos gradually. So we're working our way towards. So but nobody wants to answer me now because uh, the inauguration, the inauguration. <laughs> everybody's focused on inauguration, which I understand, but it's okay. Wait for the big event in June. Yes, the big event in June is a very small event, not a big event. Please. So <laughs> everybody are trying to act as if the whole of Nigeria is a small event. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we return, we'll look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. National Assembly. Governors will back Akwabio Abbas, says Sule. Akwabio praises Buhari's wife for African First Lady's building. 
Transition Council rolls out Tinubu Shetima inauguration program. Matawale on the probe for 70 billion naira contract, says EFCC. Scary. We have spent 200 billion naira on postponed sensors, say NPC. Or Tom named Street after um, 1990 coup plotter or car. Okay, which story, Maria? Let me start with Jam. I think you can see that. I took that. The red line. Oh, yes. Jam remits 55 billion naira <laughs> in six years. Okay, yes. I missed so that. the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has remitted 2 billion to the Federation account as interim surplus for 2023 operating That's year. That's a lot. Yes. So in a in, in a time where a lot of us are in a time where a lot of us are constantly hearing about not mm. enough money, not mm. enough uh, money is never enough. Yeah. Here we have, you know, Jam remitting a lot of money to the federal government. In fact, it says that since the Professor Isha Kole Oloye days um, management and administration, he's remitted 55 billion to the federal government since 2016 and that he's been able to do that really because um, they have looked through some like they had some arrangements with service providers they were able to look at the figures and you know rework that arrangement and they're able to get the same service for much for much um, cheaper. They said that um, there are savings of 1.2 billion paid annually to a service provider, a downward review of 1.2 billion annually paid to another to about 400 million with the same old service provider. This is, this is in addition to the recovery of over 1.2 billion in both cash and estates in choice areas of Abuja in 2016. So just this is a man that is definitely um, has built a reputation as someone with integrity, you know, and I'm sure that um, history and legacy people, Nigerians, will be kind to what he's done for Jam and for our country. Right. All right, you have a story there? Yes, uh, from the nation. Uh, we spent 200 billion naira to prepare for postponed census. The national <laughs> population, <laughs> the National Population uh, Commission said. Uh, they had spent so far 200 billion naira in preparation, despite the fact that it was postponed. And uh, they said they had a budget of 800 billion naira, which was, which was initially uh, budgeted for. And that uh, the federal government, you know, gave them 224 uh, billion naira. So uh, they've spent out of that 224 billion naira, they spent uh, 200 uh, billion naira. So I guess, uh, well, this will will have to get them to prepare more mm. uh, to justify all of the spending. Yeah, and okay. I think the important message there is, you know, the census was supposed to have been carried out, but the president has postponed it. And the commission is saying it's actually the best thing to do, given that we're about to get in, you know, uh, we're just transitioning into mm. another administration. So it's mm. best to put it on hold. So I hope that money they've given them, they'll keep it well. And that when <laughs> okay. it's time, we'll say what happened to the 200 billion. All right, let me take the story. So to the Transition Council, uh, have finally that the presidential the transition council have actually rolled out the inauguration program for the incoming administration. According to them, um, this would <clears throat> take place. We all know 29th. <laughs> However, uh, Tinubu will, will take office as a fifth president of the Fourth Republic and the 16th president since um, independence. Hmm. Uh, the president elect will be conferred with the highest national award, which is GCFR, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, and. The Sh and Shatima will be, we get the second highest honor, which is the GCON, that's the Grand Commander of the Order of, the, uh, of Nigeria. Um, the, some of the activities include um, Children's Day event that we have in the church service on Sunday, oh, good. having a pre dinner um, gala night. And the theme of, of this is going to be called Nigeria Better Together. So ah, um, okay. they've had a whole lineup of activities towards it. It's a historical moment, many. Um, Leaders across the world have been invited, and the, many of them have also confirmed. So it's going to be a really, really um, tight security event to attend. The theme um, shows me the theme shows that this administration is quite sensitive to hopefully. our unity. 
Yes. Better yes. together. That better is together. an important and message to it's pass right now. They push that mm. narrative well, across. Better together. And okay. it speaks of hope. Well. Yes. Okay, moving on now to the punch. Um, Tinubu's inauguration, I talked about that program, begin Thursday. FG invites over 65 world leaders. Federal allocation drops again as federal government states share 655 billion naira. Live broadcast threats to tribunal judges' lives, Tinubu says, Tinubu's lawyer. Um, two held over U.S. consular officials killing. NYSE at 50, Buhari grants 65 ex corpus automatic employment and scholarships. Matawale diverted 70 billion naira with 100 firms. EFCC alleges and Oshun workers protest as Adelike begins payroll audit. Okay, which story are we starting with, Mariam? Um, start with the Matawale. I just realized I didn't pick the... Oh, you really okay, go no, ahead. No, you, no, you go ahead with the Matawale story. Okay, let me, so which story are you going to take in... in, in the um, update on the consulate. All right, let me just quickly run down. So the EFCC have said... Um, it is investigating governor of Z the outgoing governor of Zampara State, Bello Matawali, on allegations of corruption, award of phantom contracts to the tune of over 70 billion naira. According to them, um, um, it was compelled to make the EFC was compelled to make the development public following the recent attempt by the outgoing governor to cast aspersions on the integrity of the agency's fight against corruption. If you recall, um, recently, Governor Matawale has been in the news since Saturday, and we've been taking his story here. The Director of Public Affairs, EFC, Osita Nwaja, uh, was speaking yesterday and said that, unfortunately, it is not within Matawale's remit to dictate to EFCC whom to arrest, when to arrest, or where to arrest suspects in the custody of the commission, cut across all sectors and social classes, and he has no right to cast suspicions on hmm. the commission. Yeah. Okay. My, okay, so, um, on the issue of the live broadcast... Um, oh, live broadcast, yes. Yes, that's also been trending. Yes. You know, a lot of back and forth. Uh, says uh, live broadcast threat to tribunal uh, judges, says Tinubu's uh, lawyers. And, of course, they're saying that, um, you know, when you have to broadcast some of this uh, trans uh, or transmit uh, the proceeding of the tribunal and that it's going to bring insecurity or safety of the judges are going to be, um, you know, um, how, how do you say that yeah. now? Um, we are, their lives will be at risk. At risk, mm, yeah. because whatever, whatever kind of uh, judgment you yeah, know, they have to put out there, yeah. if it's not in favor of the other party, and then you begin to have people who will say, Death oh, threats. we are going after these people, yeah. and then send lots of threats and all of that. So that's the argument uh, coming from Tinubu's lawyer's uh, camp. And then uh, we also have uh, Atiku and the PDP, um, in their own application to say that they are seeking for the live broadcast of the tribunal, you know, to uh, to proceed. And, of course, that is in court. Right, right. So hopefully, well, we get to hear what uh, the court will final. say, right. the final judgment. All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to continue now with Punch. You had a story, yes, Maria? Yes, story. So I have an update on the sad incident that happened to the U.S. consular officials. Um, so the police is saying that uh, they have arrested two persons of interest um, who are currently assisting them in investigations. They said that they had gone to the... After the shootout on the day of the um, tragic events, they had gone to where they believe was their hideout, where it was deserted. And... Um, so they're investigating. But they said also one of the things that they did is that they raised that criminal camp down. And I'm a bit worried about that because usually, according to movies, we'll see that places like that would be staked out for forensic investigation. To now raise it down, I feel like, are you not um, you know, tampering with evidence there? Anyway, the police says that they, are, they have two people of interest in their, with them who are helping in the investigation. And then hopefully... 
you know, we would find out again, we'll get more updates. And for me, it seems very quick. I don't know if it's just me, but this response seems quicker than most. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about Plateau State. We've talked about 80, 85 or so people who have been killed, killed. in the community, mm -hmm. and this has been happening back to back, and we still do not have yeah. any arrests. So this seems... But there, quicker. nobody's holding them to account. But here, they have the U.S. government to yes, hold on, breathing on their neck, so... And, and I, I also feel probably because of the diplomatic relationship yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. that is involved yeah, careful. Yeah. Uh, might hasten. But I just hope also that, you know, they're not arresting innocent people just, yeah. mm. you know, so that they can show off that they, they yeah, have the power. Yes. Okay. okay, moving on now to Vanguard patients grown as doctors strike into day two. Montgomery appointed new British High Commissioner to Nigeria. Um, Sheonkuti court extends detention by four days. Bawa must quit now, CSO still federal government. U.S. convoy attacks, police arrest two suspects. Port congestion looms over suspension of banks' import duty collection. Gunmen kidnap core member returning from camp in rivers. And media play a crucial role to avert crises and war, says Sultan and um, Khan. Okay, which story are we starting with? Um, uh, wait, the UK appoints Montgomery as new British High Commissioner to Nigeria. Uh, it was being said that the British uh, government has appointed Dr. Richard Montgomery as its new High Commissioner to Nigeria. And it also went on to, um, to acknowledge the previous or the former High Commissioner in person of Ms. Uh, uh I guess. Katrina, I beg your pardon, Katrina, who, you know, suddenly um, was, not suddenly, really. <laughs> I wanted to say she was That's highly passionate. Yeah, yeah. She was passionate about the election, the, uh, the election, especially for the presidency. So, well, I want to believe that um, at the end of the day, you know, we are going to continue to have that good relationship with yeah. the UK and foreign um, international organizations and countries as well. Okay, so let me talk about the, take the major headlines. So if you recall last Wednesday, the resident doctors had I issued a five-day warning strike following the federal government's inability to address their demands. Now, this strike has gone into day two right now. Um, hospitals, uh, especially um, the Hamadou Bello University Hospital in Kaduna and also hosp public hospitals in Kaduna, in Nassau State have experienced lots of... Um, um, exit, a mass exit of patients into private hospitals. According to them, um, the doctors have expressed, the patients actually have expressed frustration over the inability to receive treatment at the public hospitals. And doctors are not backing down. They're saying that they're going to continue this warning track until the issues raised are addressed um, to include poor infrastructure, manpower shortage in health sector, non-payment of medical residency training fund, non-increment of consolidated medical salary structure, as well as failure of state governments across the country um, to pay their salary arrears of the doctors. Yeah, I have this story. So in Port Harcourt, it's been reported that government kidnapped some NYC um, core members in Emu, Emu Hualuka government area of River State. Um, this story actually broke on a radio station when someone called to say that had sister-in-law and a colleague were kidnapped on their way back. Um, so, but, you know, the police have responded as well. And they said, yes, they are aware that the kidnap happened of youth coppers and that they have rescued a few of them, but there are still some with the, a few that are still held captive by the kidnappers. But eyewitnesses are saying they were not rescued. Instead, they luckily escaped their captors. But uh, the police command in Port Harcourt is saying that they have put men on ground to look out for these abductors and also rescue those who yeah. are still in captivity. That's so shocking. Imagine sending mm -hmm. your child for NYC and then you hear that they've been kidnapped. I think so, some years back, people were clamoring for NYC to be shot down. Because, I mean... That conversation has been, has been, has been like every day, back and yeah. forth. People, every year, somebody always comes up with the fact that some people defend it, some people say, no, it's time for you to go. But hey. We need to okay. put better safety measures. It has to be in place. Yes. The Nigerian Tribune, EFCC Bosom for a governor, exchanged words over the alleged 70 billionaire fraud. El Rufai revoked C of O of McAfee's um, companies and landed properties. Court remands Sheon Kuti 
for additional four days. Speakership praise G7 aspirants vow to fight on. Attack on U.S. officials in Anambra, seven confirmed killed, two missing as police begin search. Oshun labor movement kicks against proposed staff audit. And direct entry UTME candidates now to write same exams. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let me start. So in Oshun State, right, the, uh, ha, the proposed uh, staff audit, the state government has proposed the staff mm -hmm. audit, but then there's this movement called the Joint Labor Movement. So this is a union comprising of NLC and TUC, that's a trade union congress, and they are not happy about it. They don't want it to hold. According to them, they said these audits have happened before and it has been really hard on the staff members as well as pensioners. It just never ends well for workers in the state, for staff in the state. And so they do not want anything to do about it. But in my opinion, I feel staff audit is important. We need to know who the ghost workers are. We need to know who is really on the payroll and working and who isn't. So I guess we would hear, we would hear updates next week on what the next step yeah. is but i think an audit is important right. but maybe push instead for a better way to do it so that people don't have to suffer through the process okay so the Kaduna state governor nasir el rufai has revoked the right of occupancy of uh, nine companies belonging to the former governor of the state senator ahmed makarfi um, as properties have also been slated for demolition um, uh, um, also, he, they specifically sent the notice of um, revocation addressed to the director of Kane Properties. Um, and obviously, this didn't go down well with work of his lawyers. According to him, he said, our lawyers will respond accordingly to the revocation and withdrawal of right of occupancy of the companies. Um, the PDP National Chairman, Senator McAfee, uh, said that there is a serious issue right now. We need to meet who stars Yunus to go to court to stop the state government. They just sent nine revocation letters. So obviously, Rufai is doing a lot of firecracking before the end of his administration. Some last-minute things. Some last-minute things. You know, <laughs> let me just destroy some people. Yeah. All right, let me... Any stories? I think... Um, so, I have a, Shionkuti, so I have I don't have a Shionkuti story. I have this story, but I haven't heard you read it. Maybe I missed it. Okay. It's our first lady, Aisha Buhari, and she has completed and inaugurated headquarters of African First Ladies Peace Mission in Abuja. And so it was being, uh, during the inauguration, right. um, we had the former Akwaibon State Governor who was commending her for what she's done. And he, and he says it shows her commitment to peace in Africa by collaborating with other African countries to, you know, to do this. Right. And he says, because in the absence of peace, tribes take center stage. And in such avoidable situation, our women, our youths are always at the receiving end of these conflicts. Right. I just wanted to highlight something that the right. wife of the president had done. Fantastic. So, um, cultural demands, uh, Sharon Kuti, for additional four days uh, as a Sabo Yaba Chief Magistrate Court in Lagos has granted an application for the extension of Afrobeat singer Sharon Kuti uh, to be remanded for an extra four days. And... Um, you know, she's also had to say that uh, they needed to do this, uh, that the defendant should be admitted afterwards uh, for bail, um, you know, of the sum of one million naira, with two shorties uh, in the likes of the sum at the end of the 48 uh, days, 48 hours remand. All right. I think that's all we can take. Uh, the Guardian, there's not been, I think most of the stories have been taken already. Except for the fail, the Jura Bridge. Mm. Residents blame shortage job and lack of supervision. Oh. Um, Nigeria hopeful of the $32.5 billion oil projects as NNPC eyes the 1.8 um, barrels per day, million bar 1.8 million barrels per day in July. Um, nobody took that um, Jura Bridge. It was really training yesterday, but the okay, Ministry of uh, Works, you have that story? Yes. Yeah. You, you could actually see this gully. Picture, yeah. Deep gully, you know, rides oh. on that road. Was yeah. that the bridge? I yeah, saw yes, that picture. Yes, that was the Jura Bridge. Yesterday. And yeah. it just went on to say that, um, you know, anytime there are contracts being given to people, what measures do they have, you know, to make sure that they do the right things? You know, there were no reinforcement. There was this huge gap between the, the tar, Top. yeah, and then, you know, what was beneath. It was really a horrible sight. All right, so the minister actually of uh, works have immediately, yesterday immediately ordered the, um, the closure 
as a According to them, okay. they said the federal government directs immediate closure as theft of reinforcements lead or led to the failure of section of the Jura rule. So that's a lot. That, that's, that's, that's a very a weighty allegation. They're saying that some thefts of reinforcements okay. probably what led to the um, that, that, that gully we saw. Uh, but um, I know it's been addressed, and I know that there was a press release yesterday that, that also went viral with the, um, alongside the picture that was going around. Okay, that is all we can take on review. When we return, it's our celebrity just today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So about an hour ago, we saw a story that really caught our attention about helps. Uh, according to this report or this blog, uh, a nanny was apprehended for performing sexual activities on a one-year-old boy. According to the story, uh, the mother had put a CCTV camera around the house. And that's how she was able to discover what this help, who was brought in from Kutonu, was doing to her child. And when I read the story, I had goosebumps because I don't have CCTV cameras in my house. And I keep thinking to myself, hmm, could this be me? You know, although I, I know I have good people living with me, but you just never know. Hmm. Um, so this is a story that caught our attention and we thought was important <laughs> for us to discuss it. Um, I, I would like to hear your thoughts on this, especially those of us have had these kinds of experiences yeah. where we caught um, helps who are supposed to be assisting us in one thing or the other, and, um, and we're now, we can actually be a, sense, a source of help to others to deter them from falling into that kind of um, situation. You can call us on the numbers on your screen, 0812705367. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. This is a really painful situation. When I think of a one year I'm thinking of a baby. Like, yeah, that is a baby. In fact, the story says she would take off his diapers, diapers. to perform these um, things on him orally. And you know what is even shocking is the madame says that uh, she's so nice and so hardworking. She's never had any cause to even have any issues with her concerning the work. She really liked her. She has this humble, quiet, um, demeanor. So she's not someone that you may, you know, there are some people you just feel that, oh, the way she's raising mm. her head or raising her shoulder, she must be. But this one is supposed to be a good worker. She's doing her job well. And if not for that CCTV, she wouldn't have caught that she was, I mean, she's a child molester. But also, interestingly, is that this girl is not 18 yet. Mm. So she's also a, I mean, in our own, she's also a minor. Mm. And we know teenagers and all their teenage, whatever, who knows where she is coming from, who has abused her. And so, because we don't really look, we don't really go, the way we bring helps into, our, uh, yeah. helps into our homes, it's not like we go to any professional body. We don't really know yeah, these people. Someone just tells us, oh, this person is good, this person can work. And we'll leave our most precious treasures with them, our children. We will lock our room so that they don't steal your gold, they don't steal your watches, but then you leave your whole, your biggest treasure, your child, with these people. It's, it's so shocking. I, I mean, I have goosebumps because I saw her face. She looks, she's a young girl. She really looks like she'll be a nice person. But look at what she's done. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, you know, what the parents will now do from here. Mm. Do we punish... Uh, how would they punish her? Yeah, you put her know. in a remand home or something I don't like even that. Know. Let me, what, what have you, uh, you, you know, I, I feel this is um, child molestation is something that can happen to from anybody. It could, it could even be your relative. I remember, I remember there was someone um, years ago, you know, and uh, came, came around in the morning and said, oh, we've not had sleep throughout the night. Said, what, what happened? Said one of the, the uncles, the man of the house, the younger brother, you know, did some things to the daughter. All right. 
Uh, at that time, the daughter must have been maybe five or something, you know. And this is an uncle they leave the children with, mm -hmm. feeling that you're safe, you're mm -hmm. secure. So now, when you now have um, um, issues with with those you bring in, it's it's a big it's yeah, a big because problem. Sometimes there's always that guilt part where a mother feels, I brought you in. Mm -hmm. yes. I should have done what I should do to make sure that I bring in the right person. But now she can also blame herself. And these are things that we always take it take it on that it was my fault. I didn't do a proper background check. I didn't I didn't verify whatever where she's coming from. But again, as Miriam mm -hmm. said, she's a young girl. Now, in this kind of situation, you expect that somebody who is young will be more of a companion mm -hmm. than a Predator yes. to a child. How? But first of all, she shouldn't even be having a year under under 18 in the house. We must we must also acknowledge that yes. because it's against the law to have anybody under 18 in your house. Mm -hmm. That in itself. So maybe that's another issue. Maybe if she had gotten somebody slightly older, maybe more mature, maybe she. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure age has anything to do with molestation, because you see what I found out, you know, is that with help. A lot of them, the mentality is 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 like we're coming to struggle. We are not part of you. You're not part of us. This is just a job. When it's December, I just want to be gone. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't care the the kind of service. I mean, we once had we once had a, a house help room. Even the way she handles things in the kitchen, it was frightening. You go to the toilet, you don't. You just come back. You know the same the right. same spoon you've used in in the stirring kitchen. the food for the dog. You just want to like you know without washing or just have something separate. So what I'm trying to say is, some of this house help or helpers, mm. they are not coming with that sense of your 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 mind. We are one. Yes. So it's that sense of I'm an outsider and I can do whatever it is. I don't, you know, I don't even have a problem. Yes, you can decide to, you want to be an outsider, but there are just some things that you cannot cross. And for me, molestation is a big no-no. I don't care if you feel of like course. you're part of a family or not. And as you mentioned, it's not just helps that we bring into our home. Sometimes it happens with family members. Now I'm just trying to think, how do you handle this as a mother? Now watching your CCTV camera and realizing that you have brought a monster into your home. You have endangered your child and your family. Uh, you know, we would say maybe the child is a year old, so the child may not remember. But I'm also thinking of this 17 year old who is a molester already, and I'm sure she has been molested. What sort of, what, what does our justice system look like in a situation like this? Mm. Do we lock her up or do we now start investigating to see how she would have come about this Do we thing? help her find help? You know, or, can, yeah. Yes, or put her so in a what, proper what home. But in whose home will she be going for, for the help? Will she be going from prison for mm. help or will she be going from her home? What would make me feel see, confident? Your, what yeah. would make me feel justified now that I've found you a rapist in my home? And, but yet you're a child. Yeah, I'd like, I, I like to ask this question. So if, we, if we're setting her up maybe with a therapist or something to help her, so how, what punity are we still giving her to let her know that you've done something wrong? So we're not judge and jury in this. That's why we have a justice system for these kind of things. And that's where, you see, we need to go to the court uh, to the term, just to get, get, get in the police. You need to go to the court to know how far, what can they do, what, what's the best judgment you can get. Mm -hmm. However, it's not for us, it's not in our place as a people to say, okay, well, we must lock you up or we must beat you up. Mm -hmm. It's not really in our place. But however, where, what, I, what, I, what I wanted to happen, what you said, is that this is a child who has just molested another child. Mm -hmm. As far as from what the law says, she's also damaged. So they can, there's one thing to take her, because we don't want her going to somebody else's house tomorrow right. and doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So for a, long, a more, more long-term solution is, how do we ensure that she gets the therapy, like you said, and she's, she's healed of whatever damage she already came with? Aside from the legal part of get her arrested, yeah. they, there's got to be some kind of a way to help this child, because she's also a child, to, you know, the, to, to be able to come around from this bad behavior. Yeah, because she still has so many years ahead of her. Yeah. So possibly, if she gets the help that she needs... Well, Maria, she, would we be talking about exactly. that? Exactly. I'm getting hey, there. I am, I am getting there, Mariah, because hmm. I'm thinking that... 
I don't want to, if it happens to me, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what help she gets. I don't want to, exactly. I just want to make sure that she is out of my vicinity. Yeah. But I want to thank the woman that this happened to. Because many times we would not have heard about this. They would have just asked her to pack her bag. In some cases, maybe they'll beat her mercilessly and they'll send her away, but would never know. And then, as you said, she'll be repackaged for another family, yeah. going from one family to the other and causing havoc. Meanwhile, creating even um, more havoc for her yeah. own life. So I'm happy that they did that. So we know that, I think, is the, um, in Ondo State, the governor's wife, she's a big government. proponent for you know um sexual and gender-based violence and i know that they say they have like a sex offenders list yes so she has to be on that list no no you know she, you know, she, that, you know that the former governor now but oh yes <laughs> former governor. but she has but the yeah. is a, it's something that i believe is currently in yes, the state that they, yes. that they run in the state but it has to be her name has to be on a list like that but because of the way we employ helps, right. do we go, who, we have to now start thinking of going Proper about it professionally check. so that people who are on the sex offenders list would not find their way into our homes. Okay. Or we're able to see a name or see a passport, see a picture, Google a name mm -hmm. and able to find out if that person has any criminal record, right. if the person is not allowed to work with children, yeah. if the person is currently seeing a therapist for sex addictions and things like that. All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll take a few calls because I'd really like to hear from um, uh, Nigerians out there who have probably experienced um, these kind of situations before. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks. We're still talking about helps, especially because of the news we saw so, um, a while back, um, talking about a, a young underage help who allegedly molested a one-year-old. Now, as much as we all want to crucify her, there's also that part of the fact that she's underage. Um, it was wrong. I think it's illegal to even parade a minor the way she was paraded because I know we... We, we do these things, you know, because we feel it's the right thing to do. You know, we are judge and jury and everything. Yes, yeah, she did this to my child. I'm going to put a camera, I'll put, a, put up a camera, record her, and post her out there. Yes, we know that's the emotional thing to do. However, as Nigerians who are moving forward, we need to begin to consider what is right and what is wrong. I mean, what are your thoughts? You think this is an angle that should be considered where a, a one-year-old child has been molested? I mean, these are issues. What do you, what, what do you think? Okay, so um, I remember Miriam was saying that, you know, once you have such situation, we should have a kind of archive where you, you have such data or people registered on that data and you can always go back, you know, do your background check. Um, I've never actually supported even, you know, grown up um, criminals being paraded and their faces are being shown to now talk of an underage mm. or a minor. Uh, as an offender, but I think I think there has to do it has to do with orientation, a reorientation, not just orientation. We have to have a reorientation for ourselves as a people, for the police, uh, for the justice system. To say that you know, even as journalists, you you get to see that the the blogs that's posted they didn't blow the girl's face. Okay, because at the end of the day, let's imagine that she serves a term, you know, she was taken to court or something, and she serves a term and all that, and she comes out. It's world, our face is reformed. Our face is there, but you know. People will say that this is what we want to do to criminals. We want to name, we want to shame them. And we hope that in the naming and shaming, we are teaching someone else not to do it. Because if we protect them and we blur their faces, then if I'm a prospective or, you know, I'm thinking about it, then I realize that, okay, I may not be named and shamed anyway, so I can go ahead and... <coughs> the I understand, the, the I people that we've been shaming, mm. are they still not glorified criminals at the end of the day? You're right. So I understand the place of law. And, you know, here we're always, you know, pushing for always doing the thing... Do, um, the right things, things or right. something that is balanced. We don't want jungle justice. We don't want it to look like we're... Um, 
abusing someone's human rights, but I'm also saying that I understand where, as an emotional person that has been involved right. in something like that, where what you want to do is put that person's picture up so that you and I are going through our social media, we put that picture in our heads yeah. and never, you know, so that we don't make the mistake okay, I'll come someone to someone that looks like her mm. or would never come close to I'll, her. I'll come to you, Mary, because I wanted to, I would like to point you on that a bit, but let me just take Bolaji. Good morning, Bolaji from Amole. You there? Good morning. Morale. You're live. Thank you for I'm calling. Thank you. I'm a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Um, thank you. Um, this discussion this morning is, um, is something that I think every woman, let me put it every woman or oh, every buddy. person in the house, you understand, and every house owner supposed to have a camera in their house. Not only because of um, invaders, but because of issues like this. Most especially when you have somebody you are leaving behind. You need to know what is going on at your back. Our house is where we put virtually like over 90% of all our life um, belongings. You understand? Not to even have talk of life that is so precious and cannot, once anything happens, it happens for life. If a child is being raped, that thing, that stigma forever is already there, can be corrected. If a, a life is being lost, it can be, re, I mean, retrieved. So we need to know what is happening. We need to have a camera in our house. That is from individual now, for, for an individual person. But from the government, we also, the, 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 our place of, I mean, the, the social service um, department, we need state. Mm. They need to really work on them. All right. Like this is we are Thank talking you. about now. Yes. Thank you so much, Balaji, for your comments. Um, so I was, I, I said, it's an emotional conversation. Yes. There is no mother or father that would find that your one-year-old was molested. Mm -hmm. You won't even be rational. No. But that's why the law is there mm -hmm. to keep us rational and do the right thing. Yeah. Because many of us to celebrate, oh, the West, they do this. Things happen, a young boy enters the class, shoots down people, and they're not the face. But you cannot because, oh, you shot my child, and I'm going to put your face out there because you're a criminal, you know, they must be, you know, there's got to be ways of doing things. So as much as I see the need, and I'm happy to see the girl's face, so I won't hire her, <laughs> but the truth is, do we want, to, do we want, a, do we want a, a proper system in place as a country, sure. or do we want to just have a banana so I will clarify, I am not advocating for minors who have committed crimes to have their faces right. themselves paraded on media. Right. I think that we should give minors a chance to reform, but definitely they must be registered. And so what that would mean is if I know that we have a system where offenders are registered, if I'm going to, uh, if I'm interviewing <coughs> a few people, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking to have people come and work as domestic help in my home, I want to be able to check their names against yes. the register yes. because I don't know what the person did 10, 20 years ago, or I don't know what the person did just five years ago. I remember when we had those prison breaks, we were told to be careful right. that these people will come and they may want to come oh, into our homes yes. and, you know, for all sorts of menial jobs or domestic jobs. And if we had a whole list of these people who had run out and we had their pictures, we would have just done the, our part. We'll go to that register. You come, oh, I've never seen in this area. This person has just, um, I've just come into town because that's what you hear. I don't live in this state. I've just come into town. These are my information. Okay, I've seen your information. I do the pre preliminary interview. Then I go and check your name against the register and see that it's not that you're a, a, a gun runner, you're not an, a, a convict that is on the run, you're not a rapist. I need to be able to also protect yeah. myself. As much as I like to protect a minor who's committed a crime and give them the opportunity to reform themselves, I also want to protect my space, my treasures, and my own children. All right, so I'm asking the government call. to give me that you option. Right. In a second. Right. Olaleka, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, yes, Olaleka, you're live. Go ahead, please. <coughs> Hello, Lekon, are you there? Okay, yeah, I think we... you yes, go me? ahead, you're live. Okay, uh, first, uh, the girl in question, I think she's just 17, almost about to be 18. Thank you. 
Uh, so, uh, I think this is, this is not a case for the police to handle. Because girls within this age range, I think from 15 to 18, uh, do go through this, uh, uh, this sexual uh, isolation, or what do they call it? So, this is not a case for the police. It's not a case for the police? Okay, I can't, I can't, I didn't hear you very, it wasn't very clear, maybe we can get some volume, but um, I think he was saying something about it, that, that is not the case for police, and so I'm not sure at the bottom. Why? Why he would say it's not the case for police. But mm -hmm. now, so as, as we wrap up on this, because I know I was trying to bring in a resource person um, who I know recently wrote a book concerning um, Can You Handle Help um, by um, uh, Sheyi Banigbe, she yes, she, and I interestingly interviewed her yesterday, coincidentally, so <laughs> um, if we can get her on, she can give us some tips on um, how to ensure that we get the right people. But again, let's go into the heart of the, the mother yes. of that child. What does she do? I mean, you found out that somebody is in your house. Let's forget minor, adult, whatever it is. Your one-year-old child Baby. who in diapers was molested. How do you even, where do you start? How do you help this child? How Ooh. do you wash this dirt off your child? What do you do? What, what kind of help? Who can help your mental um, <laughs> stability yeah. in this situation? Let me come to you. What are your thoughts? If you put, put yourself in that mother's shoes, what, do you, what would you advise her if you're, if you're you, somebody, somebody that you know? You know, first of all, I think this, this issue is um, it's not something that started now. It's just that people are beginning to talk, all right? Um, Child molestation within the family or home setting is something that is prevalent. But people, you know the shame. Come on now. If something happened to your girl child, would you be brave enough to say, oh, uh, yesterday my, my baby girl was, you know? So a lot of times people just want to cover things up and then just, you know, sweep things under the carpet, do, do the necessary things, and just like, okay, well, the child is not dead. Let's just move on. Mm. But you see as- Leave it in God's hands. Or mm. leave it in God's hands. Or a Mark Mariwo, mm. you know? And, uh, but then the thing is, I think for every mother, most especially the guilt. I remember my, my, my sister, sorry sis, I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> to do she, it. Left, <laughs> she left her job some years ago as an architect to do what? To come and sit at home because she felt, I mean, I have grown, I mean, my children are growing. I need to watch over them. I need to nurture them. Till date, she's still feeling guilty. That she left? No, 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 that she's not doing so much. She's not doing like, like not there is a self judgment for every mother mm. at every point in time that you're ever constantly judging yourself. Am I parenting the right way? Have I done my best? So now this is happening to you under your roof. So what people are also going to say is, why leave your child mm. with, with help, help when you're there? What is your job? Especially if you're not working, if you're supposed to be a housewife or something like that. So that me, guilt is something you, she, she needs you know, to that, overcome. Yeah. Well, just imagine if she's somebody you know. Yes. You know what, what would you I, tell, what would you tell her? I'm going to pray with her and I'm going to say she should learn to forgive herself because she did not mean to put her child in harm's way. The devil came, tried you, but the devil did not win. It's what I would say to her, really. I would, I would mm. go to, to spiritual. Yeah, I'm telling you to comfort her because I it's know It's comforting. I um, just a few weeks ago, I almost cried on set here because <laughs> A week before, I'd been called from my daughter's school to come because she had fallen ill. She was throwing up. I went, went to hospital run. To the, two weeks after, I was called from my son's school. Oh, like, geez. I'm such a bad mother. Uh. Oh, my children are sick. That's just because they were sick. So imagine this. I know what it means I to have that sort of... You. <laughs> I know what it means to have that guilt as a mother. Yeah. And then to think that you've put your child in harm's way. Yeah. Like, you know, you question, there's no one as critical, as self-critical as a mother. Yeah. You're constantly asking, you mean you're so stupid, yeah. so foolish, you did not ask the right questions? Yeah. Why didn't you even see it in her? Didn't you see the red flags? Mm. And if you don't ask yourself questions, yeah. Nigerians will ask you. Yeah. Like, yeah. What kind of mother are you? How could you not tell? Me, if it's me, there's yeah. a way I even see that girl. I can tell you that. Because this is <laughs> And then you're constantly feeling like... We have like to wrap up, but I think um, if, I, if she, she was a lady that I knew, the first thing I'll tell you is it's not your fault. First of all, it's not your fault. 
these things happen. Um, things happen. Um, things you can't handle. Things you cannot. You cannot even predict what happen. Um, it could have been anybody. She could have been a saint, Bible reading somebody, and the way that she's always speaking in tongues and still do the same thing. You can't really. There's some things you can't control. So first of all, you have to stop that guilt. Yeah. Don't guilt trip on this. It's not your fault. What you need to do is ensure put proper measures in place to protect your children going forward. And you did a good job by having a CCTV in the first place. Right. Many, I don't have the CCTV. When I read it, I'm like, hey, Murayo, I'm using mouth to get CCTV. I have. My first child is 11 years old. My and one child is one. Well, many I still haven't actually gotten... afford that. Yeah, but, I mean, by God's grace, me, I can afford it. But I, <laughs> with mouth, I have been using it. I've called Nima. Nima, send me CCTV person. You send me CCTV. I have just not done it. So that's a good thing. At least you had that. Thank God you're able to protect your child enough. Mm -hmm. But don't blame yourself. These things happen. All right, that's all we can take on this um, on the topic. It's Friday. Um, okay, I'm told that we have um, the Shea oh. Bani Bay here. Good morning, are you there? Okay, we're going to go on a break. When we come back, we'll take her comments and we'll wrap up on this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Unfortunately, we're having technical issues, so I couldn't, we couldn't bring in Shea Banigbe. She's an author, lawyer. She would have loved her to join the conversation on, on, um, on this, on the last topic we just had, but unfortunately, we couldn't get her. Maybe some other time we'll bring her in, but we had to move on to the next topic. So this is another topic we're moving on to right now. Hmm. So the, yeah. our producer was having a conversation with us, and he was saying that, hmm, do you think... Um, how, how do you think you guys can discuss the issue of sexless <laughs> marriage and its implications? The fact that, and it's, and it's a topic that happens in Nigeria. It's, 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 it's an issue that happens a lot. But we kind of hush hush about it. We don't talk about it. We just kind of move on. And um, it's a breakfast show, so we find it very difficult to have these kind of conversations. But as, as matured people, would, we will find a way, a good way to talk about it without um, getting calls from our, our regulator. But the truth is, um, this is an issue that could be in different sides. And I'd like to hear Nigerians' thoughts on the fact that, for, especially from those, I'd like to hear this morning from those who are actually having, having little or no um, intercourse in their homes. And some of them have, are, are, have, have kind of adjusted to it, some have accepted. Others are finding it difficult to maintain that kind of union that is without intimacy. What are your thoughts on this? Because um, they make it look as if without intimacy, you cannot survive. Some would argue, I've survived well without it, and I'm perfectly fine. What are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 0812705 You can also tweet to that TVC connect. Please hashtag yourviewTVC so we can read your tweets. Mara, let me start with you, because um, <laughs> this issue, as I said, is a very sensitive matter. And um, um, on social media today, people make it look as if sex sells. I think we're talking about sex sells. Right. Everything has to be sexual, you know, and then they, they, they will preach, oh, this, that's to be your marriage, husband, wife. Do, 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 do. We get this thinking. And, but, but there are many homes that are, having, that are not having intimacy at all, and they're still surviving. Do you think it's possible or it's just a, it's just a lie, hmm. some kind of a lie they're living <laughs> that one day they will just bust open and go and cheat somehow? <sighs> it's, it's a tough topic. Like, because, so first of all, I like to separate sex and intimacy. I think they're two different things. And I think that you can have sex and not have intimacy. And there are sometimes intimacy happens without, like in this case, so where for, no... for, for, the, for our conversation. You can use, use the word. Let, you shouldn't use intimacy. I wanted no. to use intimacy to cover everything. To cover everything, okay. Just for the sake of the conversation. Hmm. See, <laughs> there are many reasons why this intimacy does not happen, right? Mm. And, um, and I think sometimes because of the reason why people are better able to be patient mm. and see through or live through it for the rest of their lives. Because we know of people who illnesses have caused this in their marriages. So it wasn't like it never happened before, but 
um, an illness down the line, an accident down the line, and it's not happening. You will not abandon ship. You have built a marriage, a union with this person. You have built a family. Just because you have one thing out of that, it's unlikely to completely break down that marriage. Mm. There will be new tensions and new pressures in that marriage, but I don't feel that that is enough to break a home. After all, there are people who are in sexless marriages, not because there's an issue, but because one person, mm. in most cases the men, don't find you attractive anymore. Mm. You're older, you've had six children, your body has changed. I'm a man, I'm allowed to have as many, so I go and I have a younger woman and I have a hotter woman, you know. And here you are, you are living through it. What can you do? Yeah. Um, especially, I think, for women, like generations before us, they've had to live through marriages like that. They know that that place has closed. Mm -hmm. They are not even looking towards it. They have now decided I'm facing my children. I'm yeah. making sure that whatever blessings God is going to give Thank me, you, Marianne, this, for taking that me is there. where, you know, so, I will concentrate so why on. Do we, why do modern women make it look as if it's a taboo? Because, I mean, I'm happy that Bobby actually is not here today because she should have, have justified this topic. I'm sure she's to be jumping wherever she is. <laughs> you know, because modern women, you know, people are like, ah, hey, hey, you've not had it in two months. Hey, how is that possible? And you're thinking, what okay. is wrong with these ones? Like, so why, why, why don't people make it look, and, and even motivational speakers, pastors will tell you, ah, you know, if you don't do it, something will happen to you. And you're thinking to yourself, our mothers, we're well okay without this thing. Now, why are we making it look as if it's the beginning and end it all? What are your thoughts on this? Why <laughs> okay. do we make it such a big deal? Do you think it's a big deal? I think it is. Mm. I think it is. And um, you see, for, for those mothers, those are mothers who, who didn't have a problem with sex or who had closed up that, um, that department, they know in their heart of heart that the man is getting it somewhere else. So what they just do is to just say, my children, they find pleasure in other things around the marriage. It could be money, it could be children. But then sex is no longer the pleasure. So they're like, okay, I mean, this relationship, I'm not leaving, you know, for this reason. Mm. Now, it's a big deal also because, ladies, have you ever had sex? Intimacy. 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 Big question. Sorry. Before they, they send send love letter. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Have you ever had, you know, that um, that's that's conjugal blessing mm. with someone you love and you know truly they love you right back and it's not selfish. Mm -hmm. It's like you praising God together. I love the way it's it releases your stress. Your your entire exercise releases your, entire your stress being. too. Exercise releases your stress. Exactly. Who's, who's no, no, no. But who? it's also the easiest. Ex Why do you have to go to the gym? You're not paying anybody. Mara is joking. No. Your, your partner you is your the. It's release. I have to. I have to look for the breakfast word to use. The release at the end of. Intimacy. When you get to Jerusalem, it is not yes. But when you get to the release, when you, they, so, that, that, so you different see, from the release you get after a workout. Yes, you feel happy, but there are two and different things. And, and besides, there's nothing yeah, exactly. That she's talking from that. experience. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I have two children. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. But, 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 but the, 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 one of the reasons why I thought this was an interesting conversation to have was because, I, especially because BC was not around today. <laughs> 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 I, I really wanted us to demystify this thing, we make it look as if it's, if you don't have it, then you're not a fulfilled person, or you're not a fulfilled marriage. Mm. Marriages, some marriages work without it. And we make it look as if, because a lot of women break up their homes or choose to leave or choose to cheat because they feel they're not getting it. Husbands choose to leave because they feel that their wife is not giving it. People are breaking up marriages because that, that department, we, are on our, we, we never get to Jerusalem. But I'm trying to make them understand that must you always go to Jerusalem? Must, is it, is not the, why, why do we put, make it such an important part of, of marriage that people are willing to break up their home because they don't have it? All right. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, one of the ways that we can tell that we love each other and that this feeling is mutual, one of the ways that we express, them, express that is through intimacy. Yeah. And one of the ways that we express, I am no longer interested, not feeling you, right. is through the lack of intimacy. So it would always be a question. That journey to Jerusalem is important. Maybe some people do it three times a day. 
Some people do it once a week. Some people do it once a month. But there has to be that journey to Jerusalem or else you will not be safe. Well, can I ask you? So if, yeah, go ahead. If, 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 so it's not, I, I, we can't demystify it. Mm. It's important. Mm. It's just that maybe, for me, the conversation that I'll have is, the pressure you put on people to have it as many times as you're mm. having it. Mm. Not everybody's going to have it as many times as you're having yeah, it. After right. all, there all are some different. people that have quantity, some people have quality. Mm. And there are Hi. times in marriage that things happen. And usually that thing will be the last thing, you know, at the, on your on mind. mind. Right. And it does not mean, and there's so many other things that people are going through that's bonding you. That, so it does not, it, it's, it's not, it, it hasn't taken away from your marriage. Exactly. But there has to be going back to that Jerusalem. Mm. When all those things have settled down, you have to still have time for that intimacy. You say, look at how far we've come. Oh, I cannot remember the last time we made this journey. Mm. Here we are. But honestly, intimacy is important. In I, I, I get that. Nobody's saying intimacy is not mm. important. I'm just saying that. But there are people who have lived 20, 30 years. My father died back in 2005. Mm. And in 2005 till he, my mom passed... Nothing happened. Even before then, said while he was ill 10 years, nothing happened. And she survived. That was the reason. He wasn't feeling well. Mm. And she's a, she, she, is a, she was a devoted woman yes. who was loyal yeah. to, to... There is a need. You see, that need, we have to define, discuss that need. That need, is, I, there, is, there, is it age? Um, is, it, is, is it dependent on age? Because maybe when you get to a certain age, the need, because YK's need hasn't diminished. No, she's no, no. 60 plus and she's I still think, in need. I think for, for that need, the older you get for women, mm. as medically as they say, for women, you know, that need increases. But, um, but oh, yeah. for it, is it increases depending, depending on um, also the personality involved. Mm -hmm. Okay? For someone, imagine you've been deprived, you know, uh, all, all, most of your life. I mean, you just want to like catch fire and just you know, erupt and just yeah. everywhere, yeah. you know, the, the sitting room, on the cabinets, everywhere. And you just want to breakfast breakfast you. explode. Hey, let me take this call. Please <laughs> <laughs> don't put me in trouble. <laughs> Good morning, Inshallah, from Ikoruri. You're live. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I'm all right. Good morning. Very loud. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you know, this topic is a very wide uh, topic. Yes. And it's a very wide topic. But uh, my own opinion is that uh, you see, our mothers those days, they believe uh, going to Jerusalem is when you want to have children. Mm. And that is where uh, the female uh, circumcision comes in. Mm. You see, our mothers then, they do circumcision. And why they do it, they believe you'll be able to hold your body even if you don't, have, even if you don't go to Jerusalem with any man, you'll be able to hold your body. But these days, you see, women... Are no more doing circumcision. I'm not actually uh, propagating for yes. uh, female circumcision. So women are no more doing circumcision, which means women will not be able to hold their body for a long time, even if if, if they are not going to Jerusalem. Mm. And that is why I say this topic is very very wide. So that is my opinion. Thank this you so morning. much, Shala. Absolutely. Thank you. You see, sometimes we forget that marriage marriage can be seen as an arrangement. Two adults Coming have come together. together and say, you know what? Okay, we love each other, no doubt. But two adults can say, this our love is to procreate. And this our procreation would have two children. This our love or this our union, this our marriage is also to provide a home to raise this ad responsible adult, a family. So these, now it's possible that you can love each other, you can be in the marriage, but you're not sexually compatible. Or both yeah. of you feel like, you know what? She's a nice, she's a nice girl. I got her in from whatever it is. She's a good way, good home, good family, good genes. She's beautiful. And my children will be fine. Everything. And you just have that nice arrangement. Mm. But the connection, the journey to Jerusalem is with the companion that both of you must be in sync. But you're not in sync. So you're in sync in every other thing except that area. So a man can say, you know what? I have you. Let me find the one that I am. That's why a man might say, I want two wives, three wives. Because poly polygamy is to say, the one I have in the house is a homemaker. That's her own work. I'm guessing somebody Fire number brand. two to be a firecracker <laughs> who we can both be going to Jerusalem every day. Cracking the you fire. Know? So the point is, if that, if that, if that is reality, if, if that is the truth, why therefore do we make it look as if every home must have this intimacy at a certain level?
because people have marriages without it and they are surviving perfectly and they're okay with the arrangement. The man might not even cheat. The woman might not even cheat. But they're actually perfectly fine. But the, the media, the, the celebrities, people who are talking out there, put it in their minds, their subconscious, that because this one is not there. So you that, you have a perfect marriage, you make it an issue. Hmm. You start fighting with your husband, fighting with your wife. This thing, you must give me, you must give me. And we have a perfect marriage. So why are we making it look as if it's the beginning and end of life? If, if, if that component is on your marriage, oh, it's going to collapse. And I know there are people that are out there who are not doing it and they're happy. You know, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say, which you also mentioned, uh, Mira mentioned earlier, and I think if you look at the scripture, you know, as a Christian, it holds um, that department yeah. as something that should be part of a home, okay? It's part of your genetics. Really? But, but, but the feelings the are there. The, the feelings are there. God put them there. You understand? It, you can't... Except you've, you've, you want to be an eunuch, mm -hmm. all right? They're there. If I pinch you, you will feel the pain. You're missing my point. No, I, I get, I get okay, your okay. point right. that we should not now say because yours, okay, can't you see no, the way this person let, is let, let, let me hear. Let me and everything all around? I think Mara is making a, a valid point, mm -hmm. which is we also, whether we like it or not, we've, we are now in a world where everything is, I don't know how to use those, sexualized. That's a normal preface word. Everything is. Many relationships are now. It's hard to just have a regular, normal relationship without that thing. I get you. You yeah. know. And so the question for me, what I've heard her say is that let's start questioning this intimacy that we're talking about. Narrative. Let's start questioning how often we need it, who we need it with, how it, and why. How, how, it determines whether we're happy or successful in marriage. Exactly. So I, I want to do that questioning, but I also see where you're coming from, which is God created me also as a sexual being. Right. If it wasn't important, why would he also put that in me? Yeah. So it is important. It is important for also procreation. So we know that he put that for procreation. And I just mentioned the Songs of Solomon. We know that there's also a process of almost worshiping you know each yeah. other in that way but do we need to do it so often and if it doesn't happen as often does it really mean that that's the end of our marriage mm. and i think that that's where we always need to remember that marriages work differently for different people right. everybody has a different way that they connect yeah. there are some people that all they have to do is just sit down and discuss and feel each other but knowing me personally if that's Intimacy is not there. there. For me, I will feel that there's something, something missing. Wrong. But that is because it could be the way I've been brought up, right. the way I've been wired. Exactly. Let me, let me come so I see anyone that's different from me as maybe having a problem, but could hmm. it really be a problem? Let me take Tessie. Good morning, Tessie. Are you there? Yes. Confess okay. like you're live. Go ahead, please. Um, yes. You see, when God created men and women, in you know, one of the ways that we call united is procreation. And procreation cannot come without, you know, that intimacy. Husband and wife meeting themselves. But it goes further than that. Intimacy in, you know, sexual, you know, um, a companion does not bring you up. Because a man can decide to have it with anyone outside. It does not mean a man that seeks love that one out there. So just, you know, to have that fleshy pleasure. But intimacy with you know, the one that is supposed to be, you know, that same husband of yours, it gives you a deep life. You know, our friends are not... It was really muffled. I yeah. didn't hear. I hope our viewers heard it. But let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We have some comments on social media. Somebody says, decrease in sexual attraction to your partner can happen when your needs and expectations are unmet. Now, how do you know what your needs and expectations are? 
Let me give an example of a scenario. A young girl, virgin, never married anybody, never had insecurity, just really, really sheltered all her life. She was one of those really well sheltered girls. And then she becomes 22, 21, gets married to somebody, and they, 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 they have their life. And she's one of those that she's, she wasn't really out there. So she doesn't know what she's missing. Hmm. She's with this man, and they are building themselves together, and they are going at each other's pace. Yes. Mm. And they are fine. It could be once a month, it could be once whatever. She, they just have that connection, and they are building that on a, on a solid rock. Mm. Five years down the line, she's watching Oprah. She's watching uh, DSTV. She's watching cable. And she's seeing all these people are talking about, ah, every day, this day, something wrong with you. The man, you know? And she's thinking to herself, ah, am I not supposed to be having this every day? What is going on? Mm -hmm. Or oh, is my man not doing this to me? He's only missionary me, I know. I don't know any other way, you know? And she's now, she, society, the world is suggesting to this pure child that, auntie, there should be much more in this situation than what you're experiencing. <laughs> and then she's thinking, so that's what I'm saying, that is it that those people who are content with once a year, once every three months, once a... Their voices are being drowned in this cluster of voices saying that all of us must be doing every, every day or two days. Because one, one, one scientist in America said, if we don't have it this time around days, there's a problem with you. I mean, that's my question, because there are people surviving perfectly OK without it. Hmm. And I'm, I say, I'll say, i say it again. I'm happy with Julie's on Tuesday because she would have <laughs> shouted me down. But God just said she would be on break today. But I mean, that's my point of view. Hmm. When? Okay. Yeah, well, Mariam. Anyway. Okay, so this, this, this point of it, Mariah, you have just couched it so well. You've made a case for it. For, <laughs> and for I want to. Section. Yes, and I want to listen. Voice. To, yes, I, and, I, and the thing is, we need to listen to it. I always believe that nothing is as we see it. You have to be able to look into another person's life and see it from their own perspective. So, having, with the way you have put it, mm. I understand that that is a possibility. But because we are growing and developing people, mm, evolving. I think that you would develop an increase in your marriage, even mm. if you don't get the outside opinions, even if you don't get the outside pressure, mm. even amongst yourself. If you meet in your 20s, there are yeah. things you try out in your 20s. We know now by the time you're in your 30s and you're still married, there are things you will still figure out. Mm. You're not even reading books. You're not mm. listening to anyone. You, your body figures it out. You would want more. Mm. And as you said, physiologically, women, at the time we get to, to their 40s, yeah. they are picking. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you are wanting more, and your husband is thinking, what's happening here? Yes. And then you read the books about, it's natural Sarah. for me to want more, more at this place. So you're working towards it. So my only fear about this, your narrative, is I hope it's not coming from a place for someone who really Copy isn't mechanism. exposed, mm. who really hasn't had the who hasn't had the pleasure of being pleasured mm. and has accepted it. Yeah. You know? Mm. And then one day you find out and then all this, your theory now Collapses falls apart. Back, yes. Because now, oh, is this what they were talking about? Uh. Oh, now I see. So now it's not because this is how we work. It's because I wasn't being met yes. where I wanted to. Now I know there's a need. Yeah, now Just that like I took recently about the, the trainers and you go to the gym. You be you are a regular person. You now go to the gym. Trainer is now holding you like this, and you're being like, oh, oh, which feeling? Eh, well, really? What is that? This what, what, this tingling that is happening. What's going on here? And then your eye open. Going, eh? This thing can be like this. Oh, I get oh, that. Oh, whole new world. Okay, so um, I'm going to start from we all evolve, just yes. like what she said. Yes. In every relationship, in every adult life, we all evolve. Okay, you can't tell me that the BSC you had some years back. Mm. You know, you never desire to have more. And that's why you've had master's, PhD, and all of these things. You're growing. So people also grow in that department, yeah. all right? But the problem now is when someone is growing, the other person is not evolving. Or the, person, or the other person wants to stay the same way. Mm. And, I mean, I, I want you to experiment. I, I want you to mm. do it this way, say it that way, feel it this way, feel it that way. And you are not, you, you just want, you're just comfortable. Like, this is what I know. Let's yes, ex exactly. reinvent the wheel here. <laughs> exactly. So that is where, you know, problem begins. Mm. And I, 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 I've had friends, sadly, who had been in that space, space of two years, three years. Mm. Nothing is happening. 
I tell sadly, you, they're not complaining to you. Well, no, they, 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 they are. That's why I said sadly. Okay, okay. That's why I said sadly. They're, they're okay, you know, with, or the other partner is okay, or they're okay with, you know, mm. because there are un fundamental issues in that relationship. You know, and they're like, I beg, I beg, I beg. That's, that one is not my problem for now. Because you have someone who is not paying the bills. Uh, you have someone who is ungrateful for a partner. Yeah. And, you know, the first thing you want to think of is not, okay, let's, let's get down to Jerusalem. Yeah. There is no Jerusalem here, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I so, so I, that I, sometimes, yeah. sometimes where you have people who are comfortable, you know, with, let's just be pushing this boat. There are issues, okay? And there are some people that they're very comfortable, then they were never um, scientists in that experimental I, I just, fit. From this conversation, I'm just taking away that these two truths can exist. That there are some people that will have it as often, and for them, a, a daily expression of that is their life. And, that's how, and then there are some people that is not a daily expression of their love it does not determine their success or happiness. They are happy. There are no yeah. underlying issues. It's just the way they have always gelled and always lived with each other. Right. Um, you know, sometimes as women, we discuss some things. You hear some people describe their intimate life. And it's like it's happening. It's, yeah. yeah. Things are breaking yeah, apart. Well, and then you are like, really? And Hollywood is not helping. Yes. Hollywood will see you in the kitchen, in the this, and yeah, I think, yeah. oh, what's going on yes, here? Well, is this really how it should be? And you have tried and tried. And even when you even tried that way, you're like, I'm tired. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to do this again. Please, <laughs> stay away from me. Yeah. You know? So I, there's something I, I, I've used with someone before. I say different keyholes with different keys. Yeah. Don't. Don't if it doesn't don't fit. compare yourself. Right, right. Pick your lane and stay, stay there. there. And work it. Absolutely. That's, but as long as you are sure and confident that that's where. So let's let's go to the point where Gwen made about the men. Let's talk about the men for a second because there's some times where um, there are issues, just like you said, that causes it. So when a man feels his spouse is no longer attractive, how does he get it back? You know, there's always that part of can you get attraction back? Can you can you find somebody who you were big, both of you. We're together, you know, yes, she's had six children, she's, she's done this, she's changed, but you just feel, you don't feel that, 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 that spark it's isn't up. there. It happens to women too. Women too feel like you have a pot belly now, the hair on your chest is now white, it's not, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, it wasn't like black silky before, now it's, it's you're white. You're balding. You're balding, your nose is widening up, <laughs> you're not looking like the man I married, you know? So how do you get that attraction back? Is another, I know we're not, we're not therapists here, but yeah. those things happen where you just feel like it's totally, um, it's not there. You're forcing. You know how women, we, many, many women fake it. They, they, yeah. A lot of women fake it. Mm. We, we fake it. A lot of us, let me not say, um, a <laughs> lot of women out there, a lot of them fake yes. <laughs> Not us, they, we many, are women. They, yes, they always fake it. They, act, they, all, they, they give you everything to make you sleep as you are doing that. But there's nothing happening. They've come down in uh, K2. They didn't get me to Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't follow you to Jerusalem. But how do you get the spark back? Mm. Okay, sorry. But before, um, let me just take a little bit, a little detail. There is a young lady um, that was talking to me for an advice, and she said, there is this guy. He was quite suiting. Everything is all going fine. Great, he's ambitious. Great career. Treats her like a king, I mean, a queen. But the issue there is... Um, she said he's not romantic, you know, and he's too rigid and all of that. And uh, said he he hasn't broken his can yet. Hasn't broken his what? The can. What does that mean? What does that or mean? the bottle has not been broken. Okay. 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 So he's he's still he's still, uh, a, he's still, a, he's still green. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's so cute. That, uh, a man virgin. I, I thought. I thought. What? <laughs> That and, is and, and I think it's 35 or thereabouts. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, wow. You know, I, I thought it was cute, but then because I know where she's coming from, I was like, no way. Okay, she's an expert. She's been there. She's, well, she's, she's not, not exactly no, yeah, an expert, but, she, but she, she, she's, she's, been she's, there. Yeah. she's been there, you yeah. know. And, you know, she believes in oh, celibacy and all they still of that. Exist. Oh, okay. <laughs> 35? Yes, 35. Oh, that is fantastic. But, you know, she, she wants them to have, she's, she's been celibate, you know, for yeah. a, quite a long time. But you see, my issue is she's been there, done that, mm -hmm. and 
your experience, the experiences, they're not, they don't tally, they don't match. There are so many things that I feel this guy shouldn't do that he's doing or he should do that he's not doing the expectations. Okay, thank you, Gwen, for that. So that in that because area, I, yeah. why marry such a person? You can. Someone's going to marry him. He's going to marry. So if you're not ready to tutor, exactly. how many of us are ready to tutor? So it, it has to be a woman who is willing to tutor and teach and a man who is willing to learn. But someone's going to marry him. Yeah. And then you say, okay, carry your hand I this mean, way. I, I was yes, going to say, teach. why do you think it's a problem? Is it because it's the man in this case? Because historically, usually men would marry virgin women. Yeah. And they would figure it out until she figures it out. Men are usually it. leaders. You, we like, well, some of us women like so, the so men to lead. Because it's a breakfast no show, let me see how it There are some women who are, may not be leaders on the outside, but they are leaders in that area. In that area. So mm -hmm. sometimes but <laughs> the see, roles are but, reversed but the, in there. But a man's so is an interesting topic to talk about. Yes. Yeah, I just feel... Especially for so, the male. Okay, so for me, I feel that a, a man virgin, as you're saying it, would knowing that he's going to be with a partner who's done it, will be excited by it. Yeah. He will absolutely. be excited to be led yes. and be tutored and absolutely. be shown the ropes. I don't think and it's such a... Trust me, it a, a, would be a, tedious. I don't, except if there was deceit from the beginning. If he expected that he was going to be marrying someone different than what she um, um, presented herself to be, if he thought, oh, I thought you said you had never done it as well, mm -hmm. was starting together on the mm -hmm. same blank um, slate, but now I see that you have done it. So that deception can cause a problem. But we, I already know that you have been there and you've decided to be celibate for a while. I'm excited. I believe our male colors will tell us. I believe you'll be excited by the mm. prospect of learning all these things right. that you have already learned and we're doing it together in the home. I don't right. think it will let's, turn let's, let's, let's flip off. it now for women because I want us to leave this conversation teaching some people or helping some people out there. Um, there, there are women who also have demands, they have needs, they feel like they have needs. Um, just like you said, they have experience, mm -hmm. and maybe the spouses, the person they married, didn't have as much experience. Yeah. There are people that are married to men of God, who are married to imams, who feel like most of the time is praying, they don't want to... Right. They, 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 it's true. They are married to people who believe that 90% of the time you must be on the mountain, you must be spiritually, you know, um, um, inclined. You cannot continually be... In the heavens in the, of heaven. Yes, you cannot continually be in the mood for that, mm -hmm. or feel that the feeling is such that it's so demonic, it's so, it's so, it's so worldly, mm -hmm. you know? So, and in, in, to, in fairness to them, this was what we grew up thinking, that don't do it too much. And society seems to be okay. But now that we allow everybody this liberty to just think and to explore and to constantly think about it, everywhere we are seeing it all over the place. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we should go back to where this we issue of intimacy is, is so sacred. It's not something you just talk about. It's such a, it's a thing you do, you schedule it. Okay, okay this is the time for but it. But you know why it's become something we talk about? Because especially with women, we found that many women were repressing yeah, their feelings. natural feelings. W women were always told that, oh, once you have your children, you would have no feelings. Meanwhile, when learning that a woman is picking in her 40s, that what you saw in the 20s is small. She's about to hit some levels that you be, you know, you, you, you would, you, that would scare you. So that's why that conversation, that's why we have this conversation. And people are realizing, and then men are saying, well, but if you don't say anything, how would I know? And that's what we have encouraged. Yes, maybe now we've taken it a little too far, but we cannot, people are not silent because we want to be able to say, I told you what my needs are. Right. So you cannot hide behind the, I'm not sure, you right. didn't say anything. So that's why, it's, it's um, you know, it's as open as, yeah. as it is now. <laughs> Let me take it, Gemma, calling from the UK. Good morning, Gemma. Good morning. You're live. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Um, I just want to contribute to the uh, Please. conversation. Please do. I have come in love. I do find this conversation very interesting. Because I married my husband to baby. He was 35 as well. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, I was a student, so I had to teach him, okay. uh, and he was ready to learn. So I think it's just a situation whereby um, both of you understanding each other and knowing what you want to right. achieve as individuals, and then coming together in marriage. Like, 
you need anything uh, your marriage is for mature people exactly it's actually for mature people absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Thank, thank you so much Gemma. <laughs> you know there's some men that are not calm enough to learn they want to feel like i know it why can't you be teaching me what i what do you know you know, because there, there are men like that who just feel like, don't teach me anything. I'll do it when I want to. I'll do it. I'll, and oh, and they, even, they, they, they even do certain things. And you know, see, women have not been able to, I mean, I've not been taught to express their needs. Yeah. And we find it difficult. So instead of being um, intimidated by him or his aggression, you just accept the, your faith and just calm down. And just find a way to meet your needs elsewhere. Not, 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 not in, in a bad way, but just find other things. Really exert that energy on your kids or your business or something wow. else with work. But because a lot of men are not humble enough to say, I don't understand this thing. How can I, what, 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 how do I, they don't feel the need, the importance of, of making sure that you're, they're okay. So the women tried. When they realized that the man is not coming through, instead of me complaining and, and lamenting, let me find out. Figure out something yeah. else. Anyway, to cope. You know, that was why I said um, earlier on when I cited the young lady and my, my take on that, you know, for her was settle for what you can handle. It's not all of us that are good teachers. And, <coughs> and I don't want to, for me, I don't want to be, to, to be totally, you know, seen as your mother in this relationship. I want to be seen as your wife because you now saying for me to teach you how to carry your head, your neck. Okay, flip your head this way, you know. What is head and neck story? It's, it's, it's sometimes too much for some people. No, if you have the grace for it, do what you have grace for. Do you understand? And then you're also going to be asking yourself, she said something, is this man someone that you can teach does he have that teachable spirit yes. is it humble enough yeah. you know especially in that that department yeah, so men, men like to, to feel like they are heroes yes. okay. you know like I, i'm Let's a give you a comment on social media you know, we really need to get our, get our, invo our viewers involved here um, i'd like to hear you know. says relationship in marriage can't work without sexual intercourse intercourse told you that create synergy and more understanding between couple okay. correct says intercourse is one of the key reasons why relationship is essential at adult or maturity age um, intimacy enlightenment awareness between men and women is one of the reasons why relationship okay and uh, we have <laughs> someone says mora is carrying me to where i haven't dreamt before. <laughs> imagine you know different kind of information here okay i think i think uh, we're good with this. Be, let me mm -hmm. take this one says intimacy is a requirement in marriage people are different from each other some can do away with it some cannot know yourselves respect yourselves boundaries should not be excessive and should not harm the other party i think that's a good way to wrap up but um any final words gwen i'll let you say a few things thank you so much for um joining us i think we i think in a nutshell what we're saying is that it's communication between both spouses Many people are the, one of the objective of this talk today is to give a voice to those who are happily married without excessive intimacy. Some, but it doesn't mean that it is wrong. Intimacy is important. Scientists have told us it is important for um, couples to continually have a healthy dose of it. What is healthy is not dependent on each group or each page for each partnership, but it's important for those who are not having it to also have a voice and say you know what let us overrate this matter some people are perfectly fine i i really hate to believe that our that the geos are still doing this thing at this time i really i, I, I don't want to i don't even think about it but I, I really believe that you know they aren't but either way it's all about communication and relationships we have to wrap up mm. tell us a bit of what you're working on because you're our guest co-host let's give us a, let's give you a few minutes to tell, tell us about your 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 book what you're doing and um what, what plans you have? Okay, so um, for my book, it's more like, you know, one of the latest projects I'm doing. I'm also working on a podcast uh, that is supposed to, or a vlog, you know, on YouTube, uh, that is supposed to um, come up maybe in the next three months, by God's grace. But for my book, we've done the Lagos State uh, launching, and uh, we're moving to Ibadan soon, I think by next month. Abuja, some other places. But I think I'm very passionate, you know, about people having uh, that safe zone mentally, 
whether in your relationship, in your marriage, in your at, at workplace, with people you feel comfortable. By the way, you ladies, you know, you make me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. from, from the moment we saw earlier on, thank you very much. Thank you. And, you know, it's very important that you're, you're in, you have the right perspective mentally. So that's one of the things I'm driving. There was something I read in your book about gratitude lists. It helped you when you felt depressed, because at the time, according to your book, we went through a season of depression. A lot, just a lot of us go through that season. No matter, no matter what level you are in your life, at some point you're faced with depression, something depresses you, mm. and, but we fight really hard not to get into, um, f get further down the hole. Right. You said that your friend helped you to put together a gratitude list that helps you to remind you, and I think BC also does it all the time, where she writes a list of things she's grateful for. She has a list of ways to go say it. Mm. How, did right. you, how, how, the, how did that gratitude list help you to find hope? Okay, so it, it's more like you have two things. You're focusing on this because you're focusing and I can't see what is right there, you know. Mm. I, I can't even see what is in the content, mm. okay. So I'm, I'm just focusing on the fact that this is not working, all the bad energy, that's all I'm focusing on. So what gratitude does for you is to broaden your mind, you know, focus on other things. For instance, I can see the moment if I'm, my head is down, I can't see you, I can't see her, I can't see any other person. But the moment I lift up my head as form of gratitude, I see other people and I can actually appreciate, oh, Mariah, you have something, uh, your glasses are lovely. <laughs> I, it broadens your mind right. and it takes away a lot of uh, negative energy. Well done. Congratulations on your book. Thank you. Okay, I think that's all we can take on today's show. I um, hope you enjoyed the show as we have. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now.